have to laugh. OK, we got to learn how to laugh, y'all. We got to learn how to understand that sometimes the universe want to see if you're capable, you know, what I'm saying of just laughing at shit, because if not, some of the stuff you would take to heart that ain't really mean to take to heart. OK, what Marla say, my candidate has been double booking my performance when I have stuff. That's what I'm saying. So it ain't us. It ain't you. OK. It's the energy trying to see if you staying on top of your shit. It's trying to see if you're going to doubt yourself and see if you are ready for the big shit, okay? Because if you're getting irritated by the little things, then what's going to happen when you're on Oprah status, okay? When you got four or five or six, seven different meetings all trying to hit you at the same time. If we can't handle the little stuff, then we damn sure not going to be ready for the big stuff, okay? So it's okay. We recording. Everything's going great. Now, I don't know how long we've been recording. That's the thing I don't know. It's been recording the whole time. It has to just start it. It don't matter. It's, it don't matter. All right. So let's get this thing popping. Share my screen. Stop share. All right. I want to show y'all this first. Because I just like it. This is the Gemini image that I found. Isn't it nice? And it is a perfect representation of us. You know what I'm saying? Because, of course, and then my mama want to call. I told her I had a class. See? see do y'all see what I'm talking about? Mama. My mama in the class. I got to call you back. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> But it's the perfect representation of us. I like the fact that it's, you know, it's the twins, it's the, it's the moon behind them, it's the mirror reflection, because all of this is about reflecting. So, of course, we're going to wrap up this class today. Like I said, I want us to talk about what it is that you have accomplished for this year. You know, I don't want to just stay in the frustration to stay in the irritation, because if we stay there, then guess what we do? We duplicate it when you stay in it, you know what I'm saying? But when you learn how to reflect on the good times that you've had this year, the things that you was able to get done, we ain't gonna worry about the stuff that you wasn't able to get done. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about some of the choices that you made that may have gotten in the way, just so that that's not something that prevents you from moving forward in 2023. But understand that today is a celebration. Okay, because you did it, meaning that you completed a year, you're completing almost to the end of this year. So it deserves for you to reflect and have a beautiful reflection on some of the things that you were able to do. Okay, so I wanted to show y'all this because when I saw it, I'm like, oh, this is a great way to start out the class. You know what I'm saying? Reflecting and looking at yourself and look at how beautiful you are and all your gloriness is just an amazing thing. Okay, so first things first is this doggone Gemini, all right? So let's talk about Gemini, the basics of Gemini, what it is, all right? So Gemini is the twins, okay? Anytime we're talking about it, we're talking about Mercury, we're talking about the third house, we're talking about the air element. It is a mutable sign and it is governs all communication. So one of the most frustrating times that we have is Mercury retrograde. Why? Because people don't know how to use it. That's what it is. Mercury retrograde has now become one of my favorite times. Why? Because it's the time for things to slow down. It's also the time for you to reflect, do all the RE words. Remember, reflect, revise. You know, who, who got some other word? Relief. All the RE words that you can think about is what governs the Mercury retrograde. So when we think about Gemini, anytime Gemini becomes in our perspective or come into our vibration, we have to understand that it is helping us to learn a different way of communicating, whether or not we're in retrograde or not, okay? It's all about the communication. So what is the theme for today in, the, in this full moon? Communication. Okay, not only how you communicate with other people, because it is the third house and the third house does have a lot to do with social settings and those things, groups of people, you know, and how you kind of come in this collective mindset of things. But more than anything is about how you communicate with yourself. So more than anything, I want you guys to be focused on today on how it is that you talk to yourself. Okay, how have you been talking to yourself for the entire year? When something goes right, do you give yourself a pat on the back? When something goes wrong, do you jump up and down and beat on yourself? <laughs> How are you com constantly communicating with yourself? It is very important that 
you do some reflections of that today, okay, during this full moon. And of course, the full moon is going to go um, into its peak of fullness at 11, I think it's 1107, yeah, 1107 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So depending on where you are, your time zone, correlate that, okay? So if you are, you know, co correlate that to Atlanta's time zone, all right? So the 1107 p.m. is when it is going to be the strongest, but right now we're already feeling it. Everything is already coming to, to you know, a vibrational energy that you can, you can feel. So how are you constantly communicating with yourself? How have you been communicating with yourself for the year? So you can make sure from now, into December of 2023, I want you guys to talk to yourselves better, okay? Communicate with yourselves better. Start to give yourself some, some, some applause, you know what I'm saying? When you have accomplished some major things in your life and stop just going on to the next thing. That's one thing that I could say that I have been very conscious of is spending some time in the present moment and celebrating myself in the present moment and not just going on to the next thing, right? Because when you do that and you start to give yourself applause, then guess what you do? You open up that level of communication from other people. But if you don't give yourself applause, and all you do is beat up on yourself, understand that that's the type of communication that you open the door for. You only open the door for criticism and open the door for beating up on yourself if that's the type of ways in which you communicate with yourself. So like I just showed y'all the picture of them holding the mirror, make sure that you guys also do some mirror magic today, okay? So go in the mirror before you go to bed and tell yourself thank you. Give yourself some hugs, give yourself some kisses for just being present, you know what I'm saying, and showing up for yourself. I don't care how frustrating it may be. I don't care what may be going on. Like, none of that matters. What matters is that today you use this opportunity to communicate with yourself better than you have been communicating with yourself. And if you've already been celebrating yourself, great. Do more, okay? You can never give yourself enough applause. Trust me, this world can be tough. All right, the energies in it can also be tough. Your adversaries, your oppositions can be tough. Okay, and because that's the case, you have to understand that the more you pour into yourself, the more the universe is going to pour into you too. Understand that with this full moon too, it's also, it's opposite Sagittarius, right? So the Sagittarius energy, when it's out of balance, is very judgmental. So understand that during this time period of dealing with Sag and Gemini, it's a very judgmental perspective, judgments from other people and also judgments from yourself. All right. So be on top of it. Another the key words for Gemini, anytime it shows up is communication or I communicate. Okay. So learn to communicate better with yourself. The other aspect of Gemini too is mental stimulation. It's intellectual mental stimulation. So we start to talk about Mercury. Mercury uh, operates on two different placements, Gemini, and it also operates on the Virgo dynamic. When it operates on the Gemini dynamic, it's all about the mindset. It's still communication, but it's communication from the, the mental part of it. So what are you thinking about? So one of the things that is causing us this frustration is our overactive mind. Right now, you're just overthinking. You're thinking about too much stuff okay and because you are that's also causing you to have frustration surrounding things that's going on okay so let's combine this with mercury slide this over all right so as we can see mercury deals with mind as well communication intellect reason language and intelligence Mercury rules the Gemini dynamic and the Virgo dynamic, okay? So anytime we're talking about now how Mercury or Gemini comes in, we're talking about Mercury. That's what we're talking about. So that's the reason why, you know, when we're dealing with this communication aspect, it's very important to, to mind your mind, okay? Because what if you don't mind your mind, it'll go off, okay? Especially when we start to talk about Mercury from the Virgo dynamic. Because when we talk about it from the Virgo dynamic, it is where you definitely go down the rabbit hole, okay? Go down the rabbit hole on your thoughts and then you become the hypochondriac. You start to panic about stuff that ain't real, 
It ain't really there. It's all in your head. Why? Because you thinking, 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 and thinking about it some more, and thinking about it some more, and then it just goes on and on and on. It becomes a never-ending cycle of what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish. Okay. So know that Mercury's purpose and plan is to get you to communicate, get you to think from an intellectual perspective. It gets you to reason and it gets you to get into your mindset. So you will understand that a lot of things that you are working on has to come from the mental first. It's mind, then it's action, and then it's verbal, okay? So meaning that a lot of the stuff that you think about, you don't even really do. A lot of stuff that you think about don't even really happen. So we have a whole lot of hypothetical situations in our brain that doesn't even really come to fruition. So you be panicking about a whole lot of stuff. So that's why I said where you have Gemini in your chart is where you can tend to be wishy-washy. So let's put that in the chat. In the chat, tell me where your Gemini placements are. What do you have in Gemini? And then go ahead and tell me where, where is your Mercury? What do you have in Mercury? Let's see what y'all dealing with. All right, Cher says she got sun and Mercury in, it, in the ninth house, all right? Who else? Come on, where's your, your Gemini stuff? Where's your Mercury stuff? Marcel, moon and Gemini. Okay, then Marcel, so this right here, no, no wonder you over there on shrooms. <laughs> you said, fine, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the way in that thing, which is okay. Okay, moon and Gemini, Gemini in the sixth and seventh house. Okay, Mercury in Aquarius. Okay, and Gemini in the third house. Okay, so you got a lot of air and air drill. That's why you like triggered because you just, you just in the air zone. Okay, <laughs> Monique, you got which, what, what part is in Aquarius? Is the Gemini in Aquarius or the Mercury in Aquarius or both of them is in Aquarius? Marla, okay, Marla, is, is uh, Gemini and Chiron, or which one did you give me? Did you give me Gemini and Mercury perspectives? All right. I gave you, I gave you uh, Gemini. I'm, I'm still, I'm looking for my, my uh, Mercury. Okay, so Gemini and Chiron, okay, so this right here is some wounded healing opportunities for you, okay? Mercury in Aries, okay, um, okay, in Gemini, got it. What you got um, in Gemini, tabs? All right, Leslie, you got Gemini moon. Wait a minute. So you and Marcel both have moon and Gemini? How did I not know this? I swear y'all are twin cosmic lovers. Y'all just all wrapped up in that thing. Y'all listen. Y'all can't get away from each other if y'all wanted to. And that, that thing right there is, is when I tell you y'all are time traveling, lifetimes together, y'all been doing this. Because I had no idea. See, that'd be the thing. It's like, I see people's charts. And then I sometimes I remember certain aspects, but I could swear I ain't never saw that. I don't remember you, you and Marcel both having Moon and Gemini. Okay. Let's see. Gemini Moon, Mercury is in Sag. Okay, okay. Mercury in Pisces. All right, Chi. What you got in Gemini? Shatara, Lilith in Gemini. Okay, Gemini in the 12th. Mm-hmm. So this is this is my moon sign is in Gemini. Say it again. I was just saying my moon sign is in Gemini. Your moon is in Gemini. Who is that talking to me? Don't you? That's me. Yep. Okay. All right. Moon is in Gemini. Okay, okay, okay. All right, Lilith and Gemini in the 12th and Mercury in Libra. Okay, so we already know 12th house has a lot to do with karmic clear, clear, karmic cleansing. You see that communication flaw in my tongue? That's all Gemini stuff, okay? So this is an opportunity for you to let, you know, cut some cords, cut, cut some things loose. Mercury in Aquarius, okay? And then Gemini in the 10th house, okay? So Mercury and Aquarius, we already know this is going to affect that. That's why you're out of the bar, communicating. You're out and having fun with friends, okay? Good place to be, having shots, having drinks, okay? Gym nine in the 10th house, that's that whole energy vibration of, you know, dealing with the Saturn dynamic of it, okay? So being, being more flexible, 
okay? And how you show up for yourself. Mercury and Sag, okay, Marcel, okay. Marla says Chiron, North and Gemini, okay, ninth house, all right? So we know what the ninth house is. Ninth house is the house of Sag, okay? So the Chiron energy and healing of that energy as well has a lot to do with how your movement is, okay? And how you make these moves, especially with that being your North Node. Because North Node has everything to do with how you show up. So that means you need to put on your Gemini hat, girl. You know what I'm saying? Be more Gemini. Even though I know you got that Taurus energy strong, when it comes down to making these moves, you need to be more Gemini. Be more, I can say Gemini can sometimes be quirky too. You know what I'm saying? Meaning like it can have, it's like Lisa Bonet meets uh, Cree Summers. Okay, how it can show up sometimes. So you already got the hair. The hair is already there. Okay, but just putting on some weird clothes and going out, you know what I'm saying? But embracing it. And that also, again, it helps to clear and, and do more healing of that Chiron energy. Okay, Gemini in the 12th, Mercury in Pisces. So anytime, anytime we talk about 12th house, anybody got 12th house stuff, this is a clearing and a karmic clearing opportunity, okay? Meaning that Gemini is coming to show you how you've been going back and forth. Where you have Gemini is either you're going back and forth or where you're allowing yourself to be creative, okay? Meaning you're using your hands. Gemini rules the hands. So when you are being creative, then you're allowing yourself to clear, but when you're not, if you are feeling stuck, which is what 12th house brings us. So sometimes the 12th house is the energy where we're the most stuck, right? So whatever you have in the 12th house, that's the energy that's showing you what you need to move away from or what you need to disconnect from. Why I say you're attached to it because the 12th house is ruled by Pisces, okay? It's a Pisces dynamic. So whatever's there is a communication between Pisces and holding on and what you need to let go of. It's the karmic clearing perspective. Okay. All right. Let's see. Mercury is in Aquarius. I have no Gemini, lots of Sag. Okay. It's okay. So look in your houses and see what you got in Gemini. So where's your Gemini in your houses? So even though you don't have no Gemini planets, you still have a house that Gemini is sitting inside of. Okay. So but the Mercury in Aquarius, Mercury in Aquarius could just be crazy. Okay. <laughs> Because Aquarius don't like people, but it does, okay? So when we talk about communicating, it's really communication with yourself, but it's also communicating with other people. So it's about having this tug of war between having to communicate, not wanting to, okay? So wherever you got the Aquarius dynamic, especially in dealing with Mercury, you know what I'm saying? It do, it do what it can do. That's pretty much what it is. Mercury and Pisces, okay? So the communication is old woman. You got a lot of Pisces placements, you know what I'm saying, which makes you the wisdom. That's why when you do open your mouth and talk, people want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because you are the wisdom. You are speaking with the wisdom. But Mercury and Pisces also has a lot to do with attachments, okay? It's when you get attached to people or people get attached to you. And because of that, sometimes it can be difficult for you to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, okay? Pisces is where we have a lot of energy that, you know, self-care problems, okay? You don't have any Gemini. So you have any Gemini in your houses. When I'm going to start starting next year, when I tell you guys to bring your chart, what I'm going to ask y'all to do instead of having y'all pictures up or y'all video up, I'm going to tell y'all to put y'all charts up there so I can see them, okay? So if you don't have any planets in Gemini, you got a Gemini house or you got some, some houses that may have Gemini inside of them, okay? So look at your chart and see on the houses side of it, see where you may have Gemini sitting there, okay? If you don't have Gemini sitting nowhere in your houses, you got double up type of stuff, then look at the house that Gemini rules. What is the house that Gemini rules, class? Somebody come off mute. It's on the screen. <laughs> it's, on, it's on the screen third, the third house. yes so if you don't have any gemini placements you have a third house right so if you don't have anything that you see gemini strong you know no planets in gemini then guess what whatever you got in the third house is also ruled by gemini so that's still a gemini conversation okay your bad your a house okay so the eighth house is where the Gemini dynamic is. Eighth house is all tra transformation and all regeneration is ruled by the Scorpio dynamic. 
So that means whenever we talk about this whole full moon and what, what the whole Gemini energy is doing, it's asking you to change and transform. It's asking you to look at where you may be, you know what I'm saying, you know, fearing some things, not trusting some things, and going back and forth, saying that you trust stuff, but not necessarily acting out on it. You know what I'm saying? Saying that you're not fearful, but then letting fear stop you, or maybe some things from the past, because the set the Scorpio dynamic loves to bring up things from the past, okay? So where your past may be coming to haunt you and stopping you from making some moves that you need to make during this energy, during this time period, this whole year of wrap up, what do you need to clear some things, okay? You don't see your Gemini? Okay, well, if you don't see your Gemini, then she look at what you got in the third and then come back. All right, South Node and Gemini. So that's even doubled up tab. If you got South, South Node is the house of karma. South Node is what you was doing last life and what you got caught doing in last life. So if you want to know, this is one of the ways I'm going to tell y'all how to, uh, ex oh, come on, Mercury. I'm going to tell y'all a way how to access your Akashic records, okay? If you want to know what your past life sign is, look at your South Node. Whatever you got in the South Node is what you was in last life. Meaning it's what you live in the most, what you was dealing with, what your problem was. When you died in transition, it was whatever's in the South Node, okay? So having <laughs> South Node in Gemini, meaning that's the energy that you was dealing with and battling with in the last life. It's learning how to be versatile, how to go move forward on things, right? Even though you know you may have been extremely creative, but the, the creativity, you was too much in your mind and you let your mind talk you out of being creative. You let your mind talk you out of being the Van Gogh or whatever the, the, the artists are because Gemini also deals with a lot of painting and art, right? And so because I know you tabs and I know you deal with art and you do a lot of you drawing and that kind of stuff, this is the reason why you're coming back again, even though you're Aries this time. You're, you chose Aries because Aries is the push. It's like, let's get this shit done, right? Whereas last life, you was doing the art, but you wasn't allowing yourself to release the art. You were staying constipated with it. You was holding on to it, okay? So again, life hack. You want to access your Akashic records. You want to see what some of your problem was in your last life, go to your South Node. If you want to know how to get out of it the fastest, how to deal with it, North Node. North Node is the vehicle you should be driving in this life to help you to accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. It's all North Node stuff, okay? Gee, how do I find my South Node? What is your North Node? Aquarius. South, the South, the south Node is the opposite. Yep, there you go. I'm glad you said it before I even got it out of my mouth. Your okay. South Node is always the polar opposite of your North Node. So if your North Node is Aquarius, your south node is Leo, baby. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right. My lactation told me today I have a cool, that's what I'm saying. You got the bohemian. You got the little going. So just go ahead and work with that thing. All right. All right. My Mercury is in Taurus in the seventh. Okay. So that's our relationship stuff. So this is, you know, allowing yourself to understand that the relationship energy and that Venus energy you got Venus and Venus. Okay. So that whole communication is how you now communicate in your relationship. Okay. Are you communicating your values in your relationship? Do you have a relationship of value? Do you talk when you talk, you talk with your values when it comes down to your relationships, right? Or do you just sit stubborn on what it is that you think is supposed to be and not allowing yourself to communicate properly, right? So watch how you communicate when it comes down to your seven house dynamic. Okay. And what do you mean at all, Dre? What we talk about? <laughs> what you said at all to? When you said Aquarius don't like people oh, and yeah. don't like don't like talking, but you know, we supposed to be talking. I, I ain't got always to. around people. That was so crazy. I know. I know. You are the, house, I do. Man. the house of friendships. Listen, it rules the house of friendships. So it's very ironic. And I think that's the thing about air signs in general. 
is that you have to get used to air, air is always blowing so it's always drawing people in it's always in the midst of people but it's also where you get lost it's also where I'm you get exhausted I know. just please send help and ration because I, I just this is the help right now you're getting the help right here right here right now okay i, I am the help <laughs> this is the only I like wanna, to with myself <laughs> i just want to go away just go away like alone just no. far away by myself you need breaks understand that the air in you the air in all of our chart you need breaks okay so know that today even though you may find yourself around people like naima is your other queries but she's out with people but when she get through being out with people she need to go home and make sure that she gets them a long time you have to find balance, okay? If you I, don't I do. I definitely do. It, it's just, and the thing is, I'm good with people, but I just don't like dealing with people. Okay, it's all right. Ugh. It's an Aquarius thing. Y'all all say that, but y'all all really do like people. You like, you love, hate people. That's your, that's your motto, okay? Mm -hmm. Naima said, listen, now I'm dating someone who was also Mercury and Aquarius. Girl, we got to catch up. Hey, wait to hear about that. You know what I'm saying? Because if you also dating somebody who's Mercury in Aquarius, oh, li listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, let's just say me too, Dre. So you, you got somebody else that's over there who, who love, hate people. All right. Both houses in Gemini. Okay, so again, the Gemini placements in the house and dealing with the home. Okay, so where you, the whole home environment is where you have to go back and forth a lot. You have to deal with a lot of people. You have to communicate, get the communication straight. You know what I'm saying? All this energy is very important to understand. So when it comes down to what this Gemini energy, this full moon energy is dealing with you the most, is dealing with y'all Gemini placements. Okay. It's really honing in on where you have the Gemini energy and it's asking you to stop going back and forth and learn how to be creative. Give what you can give and then go home and keep the rest for yourself, okay? Communicate what you need to communicate and then the areas in which you can, if it gets too much for your brain, it gets too much overwork, then that means you need to disconnect. That means you need to go into yourself. See how you're communicating with yourself. So that that can be a very clear thing going on. Because if not, where you have Gemini placement is also where you are wishy washing, and it's also where you will lose yourself. Okay, Gemini is the chameleon of the zodiac, so it will get lost. And when it gets lost, the first thing that it does is it withdraws, and not just from people. It withdraws from self. It withdraws from your creativity. It withdraws from the things that you need to be working on because you are overworked and overexhausted. So you don't want to get too far into that thing of being a people pleaser because when you got the air signs, there's also where you people please. You do too much. So learn how not to do too much. Learn that this energy of what we're dealing with is showing you where you have been people pleasing and doing too much your entire year. So that's the reflection. What have you been doing? What have you been people pleasing on? What have you been giving people too much and then calling yourself and saying that you're exhausted? Of course you're exhausted because you've been doing way more than you need to. Okay. Why am I North Node and Sag and I'm always just of how they take and do shit without asking? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So now, now, now you see why you're jealous because you're supposed to be more of that. You need to be more sad. You need to, you need to do what it is that you despise the most of and then learn how to have the balance in that, right? So the parts that you despise is the part that you don't have, the part that you're not using. So step into it. It's okay to step into it, all right? What if your South Node is your son? If your South Node is your son, that means you are repeating the lesson. That means if you got, because again, we're talking about Akashic Records, right? We're talking about accessing your past. If your South Node is your sun sign now, that means you just repeating the lesson, okay? So you bring it all the way back around. So that means you didn't you didn't get to complete that cycle. If we talk, if I was to go in deeper into your Akashic Record, I'd be like, you left some things undone. So you came back to complete some stuff. And it's okay, because trust me, we all we all doing this. We all going around and around and around. So it ain't no, oh, you know, I, I did bad. Or, oh, I did wrong. No, we all here to learn. This is school that we're in, okay? You're learning to be your best self. 
You're learning how to manifest. You're learning how to do right by you. So it's no downsides to this. Is it something that you may have wanted to accomplish and you didn't? Absolutely, but you got time. That's the beautiful thing about studying yourself so that you can unlock these blessings and realize that you are here to do what, what needs to be done. And now you can do it. And if by chance you don't, guess what? You won't come back. <laughs> you still got some more to do. All right. So don't, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, you know. All right. So laugh a lot. It's for me. Uh-huh. Love helping, but can't stand these folks. Yep, Monique, I agree. Okay. Cause I swear your posts be just that constantly helping people and then getting exhausted about helping them. You know what I'm saying? So it's okay. All right. So y'all got it. Do you understand what we're doing with this Gemini energy? Do we understand that the purpose of this, this gym? Cause we're going to get ready to get into the full moon aspects of it, right? So I want to show y'all the chart and we're going to see what's going around with the chart so you can see how to now not just use the Gemini and Mercury perspectives of it to use what is also combining with that vibration, okay? But understand that the Gemini dynamic, wherever it is in your chart, is to learn how to better communicate with yourself. It's to be creative, okay? So whatever placements it's in, apply that means go and study it go and see how this communicates to you what are you doing what are you currently doing with your gemini energy because again y'all know these cycles don't just start and end abruptly right so wherever you is you're, you are now you got six months to the gemini season right so you got from now until Gemini season kicking off in May to now have a lot of these things worked on. So that means the lesson is going to be six months long. And then you're gonna to have to revisit this again or what we call the review in December, okay? So this is a kickoff from now to reflect on what you did six months ago. How was Gemini season for you? What challenges did you have in Gemini season? Because whatever it is, it's also adding into what this full moon energy is right now. Not only is it adding into the, the, the energy you're feeling right now, this whole full moon thing is also dealing with uh, June 21st of 2021. So when we had the whole so summer solstice energy, not this year, but last year, this is that whole big cycle, y'all. That's what I mean about it doesn't stop. It just continues on. It constantly gives you opportunity to change and morph and help yourself and communicate better. But if you are so frustrated with it, you don't want to look at it, then guess what you're drawing? More frustrated lessons. That's it. Cause it's gonna keep coming. It ain't gonna. It's not gonna slow down because you're mad. It's not gonna slow down because you're frustrated about it. All it's gonna do is keep giving you more stuff to be like, oh, you haven't figured it out. You haven't figured out it's based on what you're thinking about. You haven't figured out that it's based on you giving too much to other people. Oh, you haven't figured out that you not being creative enough. When's the last time you really sat down and turned the phones off and just disconnected from everybody and just created something? Where is, your, where is your talent? Is your talent being used? Because if not, today is the perfect time after we get off this call to go sit with yourself and create some stuff so that you can allow this Gemini energy to purge you of a lot of this people-pleasing energy that you've been siphoning in for over a year, okay? This is over a year long that this lesson is, that is teaching you, okay? All right, let's pull up this chart. All right, so this is what we're looking at for today. This is the actual full moon chart. So as y'all can see, y'all know we are in the sun constellation of Sag. The moon is in a Gemini, and when we hit it at 11.07 p.m., it's going to hit at 16 degrees. Now, this is another question I'm going to ask y'all. I want y'all to look at your chart really quick, right? Especially if you've got your cafe astrology charts out, right? If you don't have your cafe astrology charts out, it's probably going to be hard for you to actually calculate, unless you know how to calculate your degree down to the actual second, and if you got your wheel out, then you're going to have to calculate. That's why I tell y'all to bring your cafe astrology chart because it's easier to read. It's easier to pinpoint. But I want you guys to put in the chat if you have it, what areas in your chart do you have at 16 degrees? What's in your chart at 16 degrees? Okay, so disconnect 
for a second from what Gemini and Mercury and go and look at your chart and what you're going to look at is for this number. Okay, so let me pull up mine for example. Exactly at 16%? It don't have to be exactly at 16. It could be close to it. So like, for example, right, this is mine. So as y'all can see, the only thing that I have close in the 16 degrees is my North Node in Virgo at 1735. And then because I like to make sure that I'm, you know, looking at the, the degree in a full perspective, I'm going to also apply my Pluto and Libra at 18 degrees and my Lilith and Leo at 18 degrees as well. Okay. So what you want to do is look at your chart and see what you have in the ranges of 16 degrees. So if it's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, that's what I want you guys to focus on, okay? So write that out or type it in the chat, or you can also just let me know. Hey, Gigi, I have my natal chart you did for me. Okay. Um, from years ago, okay. <laughs> um, but I still use it. Um, my Mars and Virgo is the only thing that's kind of close to 16. It's at 17.47 and okay. that's it. Everything else is over. Okay. Oh no, my Pluto and Libra. You say Mars and Virgo and Pluto? Uh, Pluto is in Libra and it's at 19.02. Okay, well, you, you know, it's, it's touching on a little bit, but that Mars and Virgo that you said is at 18 or is that 17? 17. 17. So that's a direct hit. And I'm going to tell you about why that's a direct hit in a minute. When we start talking about the Mars and Gemini, that's at 1607. That's literally on top of it. Now, this is the reason why you're really frustrated. All of us is really frustrated because Mars is the movement. Mars is ready to get on with this picture. Mars is ready for 2023. It's already working on your plans and your details, but because it's dealing with the Gemini aspect is where we have to slow down. So imagine something that wanna, y'all ever see uh, them babies, right? You know, what, what I got in my vision in my head is when them little kids be trying to fight and because an older adult hold them on the head and they just kind of push them off. So it's like they be doing this right here. But because you ain't big enough, you get pushed back. You know what I'm saying? That's the Mars and Gemini energy along with this moon and Gemini. You ready to move full speed ahead. But you cannot because there's some more reveal to do. There's some more breaking down to do. There's some more uncovering. Uncovering of what? What I just said. The people pleasing energy the stuff that you've been doing. So know that whatever you have at 16 degrees, this moon energy, this moon at 16 degrees, as well as this frustrating Mars dynamic is touching directly on it, okay? So like, I, for example, I just used mine, right? So if I wanna talk about what is the direct hit outside of the, G the Gemini and Mercury stuff we just talked about, I know that also an, an energy confirmation that I'm getting is this North Node in Virgo. So let me tell you how that applies to me. For the last two, three days, I have been craving to work out. I ain't talking about just, oh, you, you need to work out. I'm talking about like, it has been a crave to me to the point to where I just had to get down on the floor and do some push-ups. I had to do some push-ups really quick. I got laid on the floor, you know what I'm saying? Kick my leg up, did some crunches because it wouldn't get off of me. You feel what I'm saying? So why, why am I talking about the workout dynamic? Because the Virgo energy is the house of health. It's the house of working out. So what has been getting this direct time to go movement? Is my Virgo energy. My Virgo is ready to go and work out. I've been looking up gyms, been looking up, you know, fitness programs and stuff. I'm going to go hard in the paint when it comes down to working this stuff out. Why? Because this is the energy. But even though this is what I've been looking up, I've been doing some things in the house. I still haven't gotten all the way on it because there's still some breaking down to do. There's still some unraveling to do for me, which is why haven't I been consistent on my workout? Why do I always stop, start and then I stop? Why do I go full speed ahead for three weeks and then that one day when I can't work out or my cycle starts or, you know, I got a headache or something happens and I stop, why the hell I can't get back on it? Why do I let one little thing knock me off the rocker? That's the unveiling that I have to do. That's the thing that I have to sit down with myself and say, okay, you can be consistent on a whole lot of stuff, but when it comes down to your workout, you are the most inconsistent. So you're going to have to deal with yourself about that. You're going to have to talk to yourself about why this is not something that you can stay on top of. Because if we're going to be a fine mama and a fine grandmama, 
And this is what our plans are, is to make sure no matter how old we get that we just, we fine for us. Not if I don't give a fuck about nobody. I'm talking about me. I like to be fine for me. I like to look in the mirror at myself and be like, ooh, girl, I will tear you up that for me right and because I need this for me then why am I not more consistent why do I have so many people I'm following on social media that all have red you know workout regimens and they all look good and I'm like oh I'm gonna do that oh I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm do that tomorrow oh I'm gonna do that next week and don't do it so this is what I mean about the energy highlighting areas of your chart where you need to be a little bit more consistent, you too wishy-washy. For me, it's the 17 degrees on my North Node of Virgo. Now, North Node, what did I just tell y'all? If you want to satisfy the energy that you came back here to work on, if this is school, right? And the school part of it is you can a school if you, you ride in your North Node, then I need to boss my Virgo energy. That's the reason why I have the Virgo challenge. That's the, this, this is all me making sure that I'm bossing my North Node, right? So where is this energy for you? Let me go and look and see what y'all wrote. All right, hold on, let me back up a little bit. Back up, back up. All right, where did we start? Okay, 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 okay. All right, so Drea says Mercury and Aquarius at 19%. Okay, and then, and so 19 is going to be touched. It's like going out of it. So it's, it's touching it, but it's not really punching it, right? But that Aries rising at 14 and that Gemini third house, that six, that third, that Gemini third house at 16, babe, that's punching you out. That's why you are frustrated. That is it right there. You want to know what is happening? What is really, really happening? That Gemini third house at 16 degrees is the, ex it's like it's sitting, this full moon and the Mars and Gemini just sitting on that for you. So that's why out of most people that may be in the room that don't have that placement, this is why it's nerving you the most, right? But Gemini is where you lack your creativity. So when's the last time you did your art? When's the last time you went out and did a photo shoot? When's the last time you contacted and did some people and had your project set up when it comes down to your art? Huh? Hello? That's a question. I, I didn't just say that for I'm, you. I'm, I'm ready to answer your question. Okay, now. I'm ready. Um, it has been a while since I had a formal shoot, but I do go out and shoot on my own pretty regularly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When's the last time you posted some of them shoots that you do out and go out on a regular? I post here and there. H here and there? That sounds very Gemini wishy washy. <laughs> <laughs> I post here and there. I post. I post if I feel like I got something to say, but I don't. I don't have nothing to say, so I don't feel like posting nothing. You don't. You don't have to say nothing. You just have to yes, post. I do. No, you don't. You don't have to have a caption. You can post your video, your pictures without captions. Eh. Uh huh. See that that right that end is what's the block? Because you again you overthinking. Understand that Gemini is where we overthink, right? Stop overthinking and start moving. Start doing what needs to be done so you can get out of frustration and get into action, okay? That's why it's sitting on that, persp that, that perspective for you. So if you wanna study anything and know exactly where it's hitting, Gemini third house at 16 degrees. Not only that, then you got sad in the ninth house at 16 degrees too, are you crazy? This right uh -huh. here is all jumping all around you, baby. It's all over you, okay? Libra at the seventh house at 14%. Okay, so this is also relationship reflection. This is reflecting on the relationship dynamics and what you have been drawing in from relationship dynamics and how those relationships have been attempting to help you get more into your creative self. Okay, I didn't say that your chart did, so don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what's, what's highlighting. Okay. Uh, I know, it's okay. Just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and shoo shoo it out. Okay. Venus and Taurus at 16 degrees, Marla. Okay. We just talked about the relationship dynamics and the Mercury energy there. So it's the same thing. So this is again values, right? How are you valuing yourself? Because you are the Taurus. So now we're talking about Venus energy values in the Taurus dynamic at 16 degrees. So this, this whole illumination of 16 degrees and this whole Gemini energy is illuminating your values. 
and where you have not been expressing your values, okay? Or saying things like, I'll be okay. Oh, it'll be all right. No, nah, I'm good. No, you ain't. Stop telling that lie. That's not the truth, okay? Lilith in Pisces at 17 degrees, okay? So we know we know what Lilith is. So the wild woman, when the last time you didn't got into your, your magic bag, when's the last time you did some magic, okay? Trust and believe in your magic. Get in the kitchen, make some stuff, make some oils, make some essential oils. You know what I'm saying? Put some, put some essential oils in your hair, okay? Can Where I, can I just... Can I just say something to that, Gigi? Yeah. Uh-huh, come on. Um, so this past weekend was a holiday market and um, my mom sold some of her body butter for the very first time. And my baby girl sold her greeting cards that she likes to make. Mm-hmm. And I sold some um, anointing oil that I was led to make from Melchizedek in the Bible. So I have plenty of it. <laughs> so, so now you see what I'm talking about. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Stay in it though. Don't just pick it up and put it down. Because again, we're talking about Gemini. We're talking about wishy-washy. We're talking about where you, I'm going to go hard. And then you you don't. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Then you don't. Okay. You doubt yourself. Understand that a lot of this energy of frustration is making you doubt who you are. It's making you not believe that this is something that you're really supposed to be moving inside of. So the doubt, the frustrations, the irritations, right? It's bringing all of this energy that has been the blocks before. The reason why you have been the people pleaser is because you've been doubting yourself. You have more belief and more trust in other people than we do ourselves, okay? So this is a a shadow of that. This is this is a illumination of that. Whenever we're talking about full moons, we're talking about things that are being uh, that is being illuminated, right? All right, ma'am. Venus and Taurus at sixteen degrees. That fit. Yes. So you already know what that is. So study those things. Study your sixteen degrees. Virgo in the fourth house at sixteen degrees. Okay. Leo in the third house at eighteen. Okay. So that's in there too. And Pisces in the tenth house at sixteen degrees. So Virgo in the fourth house. So this is family dynamic. Are you gonna be home with family, Jamaica, during the holidays? Are you plan on seeing being with family? I am gonna be home. I don't. I haven't decided if I want to really be around family. I did it for Thanksgiving, but maybe. Okay. But I am leaving for Africa tomorrow with my cousin. Okay. And you talking about the communication and the frustration, and he's made me very annoyed mm-hmm. <laughs> with yeah. his communication, non-communication over the last couple of days. So I have been very annoyed at him. Yes, ma'am. And and trust me, this this is why you've been annoyed because that ver- fourth house is that house of family. Okay, that's why I said you're gonna be home with family because this whole energy is illuminating some things. So whether or not you're gonna be home or even with your cousin now on this whole trip you have to watch your annoyances you have to watch your irritation watch how you are communicating with yourself and then just don't don't push don't push don't and don't even judge the, the situation let him do what he gonna do okay okay and do what you gonna do all right if they don't okay. match, if you want to do something he don't want to do it don't be frustrated be okay be like okay cool well, i'm gonna see y'all be bad go on do what you're gonna do because i promise you if you try to do this <laughs> if you try to bring it's gonna explode this is an explosion energy i can it's tell and i can feel that so i have been like yeah. trying to like relax and not be so explosive yes okay so we're gonna we're gonna stop trying and we're just gonna not do it okay okay just, <laughs> trying is not a word okay just, okay just i'm not gonna do just not <laughs> just don't explode just okay. do not explode okay you already talked about it i already gave you the heads up on where this is coming from so you already know so now if you explode you made a choice to do it okay yes you're right all right so Leo in the third house at 18 degrees. So meaning when you go out in this time period, it's going to be good. Leo energy is the sun, right? And this at 18 degrees, meaning it's on the, on the out energy of it. So meaning you will have fun meeting people, okay? Allow yourself to do that. Allow yourself okay. to, when you go out, be big. Don't shrink yourself, 
Okay, go out and have a great time. Pisces in the 10th house, the 10th house energy is structure now, okay? Pisces is also where we tend to attach ourselves and where we also lack in self-care. So that's where one of the places where we do too much. Don't do too much, okay? Take care okay. of yourself, self-care for you, all right? Okay. You have nothing in that range, list. so you have nothing between 14 and 18. Leslie. All right, Mercury and Jim at 17, Libra in the first at 17, Scorpio at 15, Aries at 17, Taurus at 15, Gemini at 16. All right, so that's- Oh, okay. and um, I also have Sagittarius at 16. I put that later, I forgot. Okay, so this is a lot, okay? It's a lot of illuminating on a lot of ways for you, okay? So this should be, how are you feeling? Are you feeling intense? Are you feeling a little irritated and a little pressured or pushed? No, actually, I kind of feel like unenthused about anything where like certain situations have happened. And I would usually be like an emotional wreck or a crybaby. I just haven't really felt anything. Okay, so. I'm kind of like the opposite of what I usually be. Are you feeling disconnected though? Are you, or, cause like it's a such thing as like not feeling like using it properly and then being disconnected. So what would you say you are? Um, I guess disconnected. Okay. So channel it into art. We I gave you some things that I wanted you to do for homework for last month. Continue mm -hmm. to do those things until we talk. Channel this into art because even though it's a lot of stuff going on and you're choosing not to feel I don't want you to get numb, okay? These are a lot of energy that can make you get numb, okay? So don't get numb. Don't, yeah. don't choose to just be like, okay, this is too much, so I'm gonna just completely numb out. No, it's happening so that you can create with it. You can create some things with it, okay? Because it's a lot. Mercury and Gem is the communication, so watching the ways in which you communicate, especially with yourself. Libra in the first house is the balance of all of this energy. Scorpio in the second is the change and transformation, especially when it comes down to the things in which you want to go after your money, how you want to access your money. Aries in the eighth house is that's of uh, that right there. Aries in the eighth at 17 degrees is feeling like you're ready to make some moves, but seem like stuff is stopped or seem like stuff oh, is not. I wrote moving. that one wrong. It's actually Aries in the seventh. Because my Taurus is in the eighth. Okay, so Aries in the seventh. So that's some relationship reveal stuff then. So looking at the relationship energy of it and how this relationship energy is going to carry us into the next year, right? The Taurus in the eighth house energy that's also at 15 degrees, that's the value system. So as I was telling Marla, like looking at your values, Gemini in the ninth house is making sure that you are using the Gemini energy to create so that you can change some things. Okay, that's why I don't want you to get numb with this. Don't get numb. Don't turn your feelings off. I want you to feel it. I just don't want you to feel it to where it's making you blow up. I want you to feel it so it makes you create or makes you a creative person. Okay? Okay. Fifth house in Pisces at 15 degrees, 11th house Virgo at 15 degrees. Okay, so fifth house has everything to do with you coming on the stage and being out on the stage. And when you are out on that stage, knowing that people see you as wisdom. So that's the reason why people come to you for stuff, even though sometimes you don't feel like it, or you may uh, sometimes try to tone your own shine down. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. You are who you are, okay? And you have access to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Why? Because you are a resource. You are a connective resource. Think about how many people that you brought together just because of the way that you like to follow this person or see what they got going on. Like you're a huge supporter, but when it comes down to you shining in that way, then you, you shrink down a little bit, okay? So you have to look at ways in which you have been shrinking. Why? Because of your own escapism. Pisces is where we escape. So you're escaping from the shine. Okay, so step boldly into it. Ask yourself during this full moon, why have I been choosing to shrink? And I guarantee you when you look at it, it's going back to think about how the words it is that you say to yourself. What do you say to yourself? How do you speak to yourself? And not just how you speak to yourself, how would you raise the people around you, right? How did they talk to you? How do they talk to themselves, right? This is one of the things which makes a Pisces shrink or make that energy want to shrink. 11 house Virgo at 15 degrees. 11 houses again, the house of being around friends, friendships, okay? 
and how you judge yourself and judge other people. So inside of yourself, when you're around certain people, you're not only judging yourself, but you're judging other people. So this is why sometimes it makes show up as judgment, okay? So combine that now with what we just talked about from the Gemini aspect and that South Node perspective. And now you can see why you have that energy that you have when it comes down to Sagittarius vibration, okay? It's directly, it's hitting. It's, especially at 1532, that's pretty much 16. That's really what that is, okay? All right, Shatara, Scorpio in the fifth house at 16 degrees, Taurus in the 11th house at 16 degrees, Moon in Cancer at 15 degrees, and Jupiter in Pisces at 15 degrees. All that is pretty much 16. We could just say all that's 16 degrees. Scorpio, fifth house, you got to change and, and transform so that you can be comfortable with being on the stage, okay? You, you got you to gotta minimize the fear-based things that you tell yourself. You got to minimize the trust factor things that you tell yourself, right? Some things about the trust, some things about when you're talking to yourself about being out and being in the forefront, some parts of that you're not trusting, some parts of that you feel exposed and overly exposed. And because of that, this is another place where you choose to hide. Scorpio is where we hide. Wherever you got Scorpio, you hide, okay? Until you're ready. And then you come out boldly with it, okay? Scorpio fifth house is also too not being afraid to step into your magic, okay? Step into your occult energy or your religious beliefs, your spiritual practices, right? And bringing them with you, not being afraid to show those things, okay? Tars in the left in the eleventh house. That's the house of friendships. And this is how you treat your friends with value, right? But then when it comes down to it, do you treat yourself with value? Do you put more value into your friends than you do yourself? That's the question I ask, okay? Uh, moon and Cancer in the 15, okay? Moon and Cancer energy has everything to do with the feeling. Because the moon is the ruler of Cancer, that means you are really feeling this energy of what's going on. You're feeling, even though it may not be directly affecting you, you're feeling how it's affecting everybody. So whoever's coming around you, if they're feeling some kind of way, this is energy is also, it's really stirring up some things in you. Why? Because the Cancer energy is where we nurture. We nurture ourselves first and then others. So we combine that with what we just said about friends. Friends, this is where you may tend to again give more to people than you give to yourself give more to your friends nurture your friends more than you nurture yourself okay jupiter and pisces at 15 degrees so this is a time period for you to look at how you're going to use the pisces dynamic or look at your dreams and how you're going to expand inside of your dreams your dreams are knocking at the door they're asking you for some you know some attention your jupiter wants attention right? That's the reason why it's illuminated. Like, hey, you distracted by everything else. You letting fears, you letting all these stuff distract you, but we ready for the big time. We ready to be out there. So how can we get out there? You got to start giving yourself more time than you give everybody else, okay? Venus and Scorpio at 14 degrees. So this is also values and your value system has a lot to do with what you fear and what you don't do, what you're not allowing yourself to transform on and transmute, okay? All right. Oh, yeah. Degree is not percent. Okay. Neptune and Sag at 18 degrees. Okay. It's on the way out, but we already know what Neptune is. This is dreams. Okay. Sagittarius to travel. Sagittarius is also your wife, too. Okay. So combine those two together. You got a Sagittarius. You, your wife is your Neptune. Okay. So when it comes down to your dreams, have you been talking to your wife about your dreams? And the reason why I brought her up is because that's a direct Sag Sagittarius placement that you can talk to that can help you with this, right? So when it comes down to that, when's the last time you even mentioned your dreams? What is it that you're dreaming about now? What do you really want? Because it's, it's being illuminated in that placement. Sagittarius is also the traveler too, right? So where do you plan to travel? How can, if you beef up your travel for next year, right? Make sure that your travel has a lot to do with your dreams or doing your dreams when you travel, all right? So when you schedule your travel opportunities, make sure that you are allowing yourself to do your dreams on those travels when you go, all right? Nothing near 16, but North Node is in Taurus. Okay, well, hey, you know what North Node and Taurus mean? Look like money, be like, be money, okay? Draw in the money and the opportunity. Because where you have North Node is where you, especially with the TARS dynamic, is where you are expected to do you and do what you need to do for you, right? 
Taurus is value system. So are you living completely in your values? So if you're not living completely in your values, how? How, how are you going to get to your values? You got to talk about them. This Gemini energy is illuminating it. So you got to talk about it. You got to step into it. Do you have anything, Naima? Do you have anything that's close to 16? Do you have anything that's 14, 15, or 17, 18? I'm going to go on down. No, everything is like 10 and under and 20 and over. Okay. Well, good. So that means this direct energy of the full moon is not necessarily irritating you. Okay. It's not really irritating, but it is illuminating some things. Okay. So it's illuminating all your Gemini. So just stay focused on the Gemini perspectives and what you have in Mercury. Okay. And like you just said, the North Node. The North Node is really good to look at because when we move into 2023, I want you guys living more in your North Nodes. Okay. Do more North. Be more North. And if you need something else to focus on besides your North Node, your Jupiter. Follow Jupiter energy. Jupiter is moving into Aries. And because it's moving into Aries, it's going to push everything about you. It's going to be real pushy on you. Okay? All right, Marcel, a Aries in the fourth and Libra in the tenth, both at 15 degrees. Okay, so if Aries in the fourth, that's the house. That's the mama clearing. That's some mama stuff, okay, that may come up during this time period. Also, Libra in the tenth. So we already know Libra in the tenth. That's that whole dynamic of balance, right? Balance of what? The balance between who you are to yourself and who you are to the world. Okay, being more of a, a, a where we have airs where again where we tend to people please, right? So making sure that you're not doing things for other people and then not taking care of yourself. All right. So these energy are being illuminated around that vibration. Okay. Nope. All my stuff is in the twos of the nine. <laughs> it's all in the, it's all in the bay. I call it the baby degrees. Okay. Well, good. If you don't have, that means it's just not bouncing up and down on you. Okay. This particular 16 degrees of the full moon energy. All right. Chris got, Chris got Saturn in Scorpio is 16. Okay. And then Mars is Scorpio is 17. So you tell her, I said that Saturn in Scorpio is 16. That's the structuring of the things that she knows she been needing to get done. Chain and transmute some of this stuff, okay? Especially when it comes down to discipline. Get more discipline. Use this moon to get touched more into the disciplinary things that needs to happen in order for you to make life happen, okay? Because if not, then that Scorpio energy ain't gonna, it's, it's also a place where it reveals a lot of things. So it's going to reveal some of the things that have been getting in the way as it relates to this, okay? So make sure that she is looking deeper into the aspect of the Scorpio and where she has been resisting to change when it comes down to what this full moon is eliminated. So whatever trigger she got, that's the point of what needs to be worked on and changed. Same with the Mars and Scorpio energy, right? At 17, because the whole Mars dynamic is conjunct with the moon. So even though we're ready to make the moves, we got other stuff we need to reveal. We got other stuff that needs to be opened up a lot of stuff that needs to be shown as it relates to the dynamics of why why we haven't been really tapping deeper into the things that we need to tap deeper into okay so Tara said lord i don't know what i said to you what, what you said lord about <laughs> okay she sun and aries at 17 degrees okay pluto and libra 17 degrees okay and then we got North Node and Virgo at 17 degrees. So you got, you just heard me say about the North Node. So you were already in there. So I don't know what's been going on with the workout because you are a workout Man. guru. So staying consistent, huh? What you say? Man. Consistency. Consistency, yep. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what I say. It's the consistency yeah. part of it, right? And it's got, me though. That, it's got me, it's on me though, it's on me. No, who you telling? It's on Man. both of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, on, it's on both of us and again it's the back and forth energy right it's knowing that what you need to do and yes. doing it you know doing yes. it for a good yes. week yes. Right. and then it's like one thing happened cycle come on and oh i'm gonna take the day off or you gotta go do something else you know it don't matter what it anything will work whatever it is whatever it is it gets in the way and when it gets in the way, you know what I'm saying, then we fall off. So it's developing something that allows us to say it's the two state consistent. That's the north because again, we're supposed to live more in our north node. So being, you know, having a steady consistent of working out, 
We right. gotta do that. That's right. the only way that's going to allow us to really accomplish everything in life. So if you ever feel blocked or feel mm -hmm. like something's getting in the way, it's that. It's right. that goal, no goal, no goal, and not be not being focused on that. So trust me, I'm right there with you. I got Thank that. You. I got that place. Let's rock it. We got it. We're on it. Now that sun Aries is 17 degrees. This is about your illumination and how you show up and being tired, right? Or not allowing yourself to have enough energy. So yeah. watch where you are being tired. I would say watch your, uh, check your iron levels. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Very tired. Yeah. Yes. Checking your iron levels, even maybe uh taking a supplement like raw iron, right? I'll send you something okay. that's also been taken to kind of help out with that. But yeah. the sun and Aries energy is 17 degrees. The Gemini energy is asking you to make sure that you're watching your energy levels. What yes. is what's going on with your energy? Yes. Okay. Pluto and Libra, 17 degrees. That's all dealing with some relationship dynamic stuff and the balance of that. Some parts of the Pluto is asking you to change how you've been showing up in relationships. And the oh, Libra yeah. part is where we tend to do more for our relationship than we need to do for ourselves. So you got to find balance in it. Some okay. that you're not saying and some that you're not doing is allowing you to give more than you need to give. And then on the back end of it, you're not getting what you need to get. And it's because Absolutely. Pluto is saying you need to change. You got to communicate that differently. You got to okay. change. It. Okay. It. Thank you. All right. All right. Good. So we look at, again, the rest of the chart. So we see what's the sun, the moon, where the moon and the, um, the Mars dynamic is. That's the irritation. But the other part of this too is y'all is the fact that this Mercury energy is in Capricorn at one degree. Now, the beautiful thing about Mercury being in Capricorn is because the Capricorn is the part that's going to supply the structure that we need to all this whimsical back and forth energy that is the, the, the Gemini part of it. Gemini is going to do this because it's air and this is how that particular air moves whereas if we were talking about uh you know a libra air the libra air does this okay it literally goes this way the aquarius air go up and down up and it goes up to the heavens and stay up there for a while then it shoot back down and it goes back up but when we talk about the the gemini part it just do this it is like, it's almost like this little sporadic type of energy that keeps just shooting back and forth. So we need some direction and the direction part of it is the Capricorn energy in Mercury. Okay. So the Mercury part comes in to say, listen, I don't care how much you ready to make moves. I don't care how much you think you know what you need to do. I don't even care if you feel like you're ready to do it. You're going to sit down with yourself and you're going to face the music, whether you want to or not. Because Capricorn is the oldest earth that we have. So its job is to bring you to realization about what's been getting in the way of your discipline, okay? And I guarantee you, if you want to know what's been getting in the way of your discipline, it's been your emotions, all right? Your emotions is the big factor in why you don't do what needs to be done. So if you, again, want to know how to satisfy this whole rest of the year, you got to spend more time on your moon signs. You got to spend more time on your emotional energy. So the point to where next year, one of the things that I'm going to be focusing on more in my classes, every month we're going to sit and, and spend more time on the moon signs. So like starting in January, we're going to have a whole class that's just specifically on moon and Capricorn. We're going to talk about moon and Capricorn, the upsides of moon and Capricorn, the downsides of, of moon and Capricorn. In February, we're going to do moon and Aquarius, the upsides of, of moon and Aquarius and downside. So you need to do this for yourself. Whatever your moon sign is, you need to look at the light and the dark sides of it. And when I mean light and dark sides, light is when you are balanced in your moon. Dark is when you are out of balance in your moon. So if you want to know what's been getting in the way of your consistency, and I'm talking to all of us, including me, okay? I got moon and Pisces. Whatever your moon sign is, study it. Spend a lot of time in 2023, spending time working your moon sign, studying it, looking at it. Not only that, looking at what days that the moon is actually in your sign and using it. Making those your power days, making those the days in which you do clearing and you do work. Because if you do that, then this whole Mercury and Capricorn energy that's going to be there for, for a minute is going to help you to see some things that is going to help you get deeper into the energy that you need as far as the consistency, okay? 
Oh boy, the Gemini moon um, unbalanced is a hot ass man. Who you telling? Listen, all of our moon signs is a hot ass mess. There is not a person in here that don't have, even moon and cancer is a hot ass mess, okay? And moon is the ruler of cancer. So moon energy can be a hot ass mess when it's unbalanced. But baby, let me tell you about a moon sign that is balanced. A moon sign that is balanced is a creation powerhouse. Do you hear me? There is nothing that you cannot manifest. There is nothing that you cannot create and bring to full fruition when you know what you're doing when it comes down to balancing out your emotional energy. So whatever it is, whatever your moon sign is, spend today studying it. As an addition to the other homework I've already given you, make sure that you spend some time today studying your moon sign. Studying your moon sign when it's in this light side, when it's balanced, and when it's not balanced. If you want to know how to find out when it's balanced and not balanced, just look at the sign. And when you look at the sign, it'll give you keywords, right? So if you look at Aries, right? Some of the balanced energy of Aries is pioneer, okay? Leader, right? It's the, it's the uh, forward thinking energy, right? But then the out of balance Aries energy is, is uh, hot headed, okay? Uh, uh, jumping too fast, right? Or being yeah. argumentative, right? So we're talking about the moon sign perspective I just gave you. I just told you that. So if you got a moon in Aries, I just told you what it's like to have a balanced moon in Aries and an out of balance moon in Aries. An out of balance moon in Aries is going to be argumentative, okay? It's going to be hot headed. It's going to trigger the fuck out you. You know what I'm saying? But when it, an Aries moon is balanced, it's going to be a good leader. It's going to be something that is going to make sure that you can see the future. You see, you are the pioneer in this thing. So if you want to know how to look at that, just look at the aspect that you have and look at the keywords and the keywords is going to show you what it's like to have those energies in balance and when they're out of balance okay y'all got it all right the other aspects i want to bring to light that we're going to uh look at for just the close out of this particular energy because it's the last full moon so we're talking about the last energy of 2022 you're looking at it right now right so we talked about the mars the jupiter and pisces is going to be ending on the 23rd okay it's going to be fully back into aries when jupiter gets into aries it's going to push you Okay, it's going to push you in a good way if you're ready. If you're ready for next year and you're ready to really make life happen, then great. When Jupiter gets back in Aries, because it was in Aries in July of this year, and then it, it switched out of it back into Pisces because it went into retrograde. So it's coming out of retrograde and back into that Aries energy on the 23rd. So when that happens, be ready. If you have Jupiter in Aries, this is a money year for you. Okay, so well, whoever you got Jupiter and Aries in this room, this is a year of money. If you don't have Jupiter and Aries, it don't mean that you ain't gonna make no money. It just means that the Jupiter and Aries person got more of an opportunity for money. Everybody gonna have an opportunity for money. This is a good year, okay? If you ready for a good year, this is it. But you have to be ready for it. That means you gotta stop being so emotionally distraught about things. If you handle your emotions, you will be ready for it, okay? I've come to realize that Aries men in positions of influence and power have, listen, ain't nothing more sexy to me, okay, than the Aries that's balanced, baby. But an Aries that is not balanced, that is some, that is some hot shit on a platter, okay? Hot shit. <laughs> she, 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 you hear me? Do you hear me? That's some shit. I mean, it's unbalanced. That, listen, that oh, is some hot mess, okay? But when it is balanced, when the Aries dynamic in anybody's chart is balanced, oh, it's something that you want. It's something that you want to have in your team, on your, on your, in your corner. It is a good, powerful thing to have. But when it is not balanced, you do not want it around, okay? It is a baby that is screaming and won't stop. That's exactly what it is, okay? So you said you have Jupiter and Aries, Monique. Well, this is money for you, baby. Good. I'm glad you read it. Because it's going it's to take you having all emotions in check to make sure that every money opportunity comes to you and you use it. If you are not emotionally balanced, it don't matter what you got as far as your Jupiter is concerned. It don't matter what placements you got that's money because you're not going to get it. Why? Because your emotions are going to ruin it. Okay.
I've experienced the unbalanced areas and those energies where women, girl, look, women and men, I've experienced them both. You understand what I'm saying? And again, out of balance Aries is not something that you want to be around. When, we, when people talk about Aries being argumentative and being hot-headed and all that kind of stuff, that's out of balance. So when people, when I when I tell people that I'm Aries, they're like, ooh, I don't mess with Aries. I don't even argue with them. I'm like, I understand. I understand you probably you probably ran into some 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 areas that was out of balance. That's not me. But if you still don't want to deal with me, I'm okay with that. See, that's a balanced Aries. DJ can. Huh? Can, can I just say that you and Kamisha are my favorite Aries? Listen, well, we thank you. Because <laughs> when I tell you I have worked and I ain't gonna lie to you, now, I ain't always been balanced now. My friend, she can tell you, I ain't always been this way. I have been hot headed and I have been a hot ass yes. mess. Okay, yes. I have been that. But this is what studying yourself will bring you. It will yeah. bring you into understanding that the reason why that was is because I didn't have a good balance of my emotions. And when you don't have a good balance of your emotions, it ruins everything in your chart, okay? And it will, that's what it does, okay? She's also an Aries, why she telling me, oh, yes, she has. She an Aries too, that has also been out of balance, okay? Had it, I am balanced now, but oh my goodness, the story <laughs> they can tell you. <laughs> Listen, okay? So understand that this is a good placement. Jupiter and Aries is going to is going to listen. It's going to bring us into a real good perspective. But you got to be ready, and being ready means being on top of your emotions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chiron is in Aries as well, so I'm gonna bring that up because Chiron is the wounded healer, right? So we're talking about Jupiter moving into Aries, right? And Chiron, the wounded healer, is also in Aries. Then what y'all think would happen if you're not ready? Somebody answer that for me. Y'all don't want to answer it? Y'all scared? Y'all think you're going to say the wrong thing? Can you repeat the question, Gigi? Chiron is also in Aries, okay? So Chiron being the theme of Chiron is the wounded healer, right? So if Chiron is in Aries and Jupiter is moving into Aries, if you are not ready... For this whole transition, what do you think that Chiron and Aries is going to do? Would it be a sense of aban like abandonment issues? Well, uh, not necessarily abandonment issues. You got to think about when an Aries is out of balance, the first thing that it says is, I don't have help. The first thing it said, don't nobody lack want to help me. Lack of support? Lack of support. Okay. So what you'll do is, you will think that you don't have the support. And because you will think that you won't have the support, you won't go for your opportunities. Therefore, you won't get the money. You hear what I'm saying? So the wounded energy, the wounded Chiron and Aries is helping you to repair the spaces that you need to move forward, to move into your Jupiter dynamics. So understand that this is a very important thing for you to work on before it makes its full circle back into Aries, meaning that you got from now to the 23rd to work on your wounds, work on where you felt like people don't support you or what you feel like ain't nobody sharing your shit. Okay, or don't nobody come to your stuff. Don't nobody come, whatever you got going on and you say, I don't get support. Don't nobody do this for me. Whatever the, whatever you have said as it relates to other people, okay? Or wanting somebody to come along with you on the journey, starting the business with you or working in the business for whatever the case that be, work on that, okay? Because your wounds will get in the way of your Jupiter energy. It will get in the way of your opportunities, okay? Ah, oh, Tabs, you one of my favorite Aries too. Um, my Mars and Aries, okay. So, on, on, you know, having Mars in, because see my Mars and Pisces almost in Aries. So understand that the wounded healer energy and what I'm talking about, it will get in, involved in your movement. So it will affect your movement directly, she. Yes, okay? ma'am. Yes. So if you don't get out of your own way, of, ain't nobody going to help you to get it. You got to do it. I realize, I realize. Yeah, you got to do it. And when you do it, then everybody going to show up. And then another thing that y'all going to have to watch for 2023 is that when y'all start to move on these opportunities and stuff start to happen, some of those people that y'all wanted to help is going to show back up. And you have to watch your resentment, okay? Because if you don't watch your resentment, then guess what? You're going to mess your blessings up. You can't carry it over. You have to understand that the reason why they couldn't help you before is because your vision wasn't clear. 
Now that your vision is clear because you're moving in it, now people can show up to help you. So watch your resentments. Come on. Can I, I have a question about that, Gigi. Come on, come on. Because I, I feel that my vision has been clear and I, I'm a communicator. That's my field. Mm -hmm. And I know for sure I back it up with documentation. I provide tutorials and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I feel the universe is revealing to me is the people that I should not bring back. And it's no resentment. It's just a fact. Like I can't take you with me to the next level, okay. you know? So, you so uh-huh, uh-huh. But you have so, to also be mindful that some of that you feeling that you can't take them to the next level, right? Because you got to understand that whoever shows up for 2023, especially how they show up, meaning if they show up and they have documentation, they have the actual evidence. So it don't matter that maybe in the past y'all didn't work well together because y'all didn't work well together because they wasn't. And what I mean that not that you didn't have a clarity of communication, you didn't have a clarity of action. OK, but now since you have a clarity of action, if they show up and they got the documentation, they have the proof that they've been moving, then I need you to drop what happened in the past. Drop mm -hmm. that because they are a very important part of something. And if you carry what happened in the past, in the future, then that little thing that you need that they come with, you ain't gonna get it. And it's gonna make you a little bit more, have to go through a little bit more stuff because you're thinking that they're still stuck on the same stuff that happened in the past. No. Now, if they show back up and they don't have the evidence, then you're absolutely right. They ain't supposed to be there. But if they got the evidence, they got the work, you better drop it. Don't carry that. Don't tell yourself, oh, well, you wasn't ready last time and you pissed me off last time. Nah, hell no. Nah. No, because this is a very integral part that you need. So this is what I mean about not carrying resentment because where you have Aries in your chart is where we can tend to carry resentment. We can tend to be like, mm-mm, you wasn't there for me last time. Last time you pissed me off. All this kind of stuff. So you got to be real mindful of that. And you're going to know it. Because when you ask yourself the question like, hey, am I sitting on this in the future part of it or am I in the past? And if spirits say you in the past, then you got to correct it. It's all right. about you. You are the leader of this, okay? Everybody in this room, you are the leader of your dreams. So when people show up, your gut is going to tell you, not your ego. There's a difference. It's a difference between your ego and your spirit. Don't let your ego ruin it. Because if you let your ego ruin it, it's going to push you farther and farther from your dream. But if you let spirit guide this, then you will get exactly what it is that you need. Okay. All right. Let's see. I also remind myself that I will support that, that my support will come. Yes. Your support will show up when you have everything in order. See, sometimes we think we have it in order. We think we're clear in it, but you also not clear at it because if you are people pleaser, then you ain't pick, you ain't clear. Okay, so that's been some of my thing. I've been a people pleaser almost my whole life. Okay, thinking that here I am trying to build a team. No, not if I'm being a people pleaser, because you can't build a, 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 an effective team if you're being a people pleaser. They don't add up. You have to know when to say yes and when to say no. That ain't that ain't gonna work right there. You know what I'm saying? Or not just saying, well, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna just get. I'm gonna just let it happen. I'm gonna just get on with it. No, that's not gonna work. Okay, so know that the remaining of the year is to work on this aspect when it comes down to your wounds, okay? Work on your wounded healer, work on that wounded healing area so that when that Jupiter shifts, it's going to also back up everything that this Gemini is telling you right now. So your irritation and all this stuff is because it's trying to get you to heal. Kind of like let it go and heal. That's why I said you got to start giving yourself some praise. And stop, you know, beating down on yourself because if you always constantly sh showing up and recalling the negative parts of your life, it's only going to bring up more of that, okay? My part of fortune is in Aries, okay? And part of fortune has a lot to do with, again, it's relationship dynamic, especially in your companionship, okay? So this is also part of that. So look at where sometimes maybe in the house, that you may have told yourself that you're not getting the support you need from your husband, you know what I'm saying? Or your kids, you know what I'm saying? Or the environment, okay? 
because that's also part of this and making sure that in order to make this more get bigger remember, remember what i said about jupiter right jupiter's you know time to go big bitch you think it's small you need to think it's big. so it's this so in order for us to get bigger we gotta be willing to let go some of this stuff okay all right now let's get into the health aspects of it and then we're gonna wrap up with y'all talking about some accomplishments and i'm gonna let y'all go all right, so let's talk about some of the help stuff, all right? So this Gemini moon, I got one of the placement thing what I had. And I posted this on Facebook, like right before we had class. Okay, so we talk about the weak spots of Gemini. What is causing, if you're resisting this stuff, right? You don't wanna study. You frustrated, you disconnecting, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to deal with it. Then this is how it's going to show up, okay? Gemini weak spots are the arms, shoulders, hands, partly of the lungs, which is reason why allergies, right? Or asthma, chronic bronchitis. So if you've been coughing and dealing with that kind of stuff, right? All of this stuff is the Gemini trying to get, get, get your attention. Understand that the symptoms of the body it's your astrology aspects trying to get your attention. I'm going to say that again, okay? Wherever you got some health issues showing up, this is your body trying to get you to see that it's trying to have a conversation with you, but because you're too busy being a people pleaser, you're too busy this, this being distracted and all over the place, you're not listening to yourself. And when you don't listen to yourself, then this is what happens. The body gets weak. Okay, when it gets weak, you start, the first thing that starts to happen is you start to have some pains in your hands or pains in your shoulders, okay, or stuff like this, or you start to, you, you're, you're coughing, you're starting to have some type of allergy issues that's going on, you're nervous, you got some nervous things going on, all this stuff is what the Gemini energy is trying to get you to see, it's not really trying to kill you, it's trying to get you to understand that you are ignoring yourself, you're not listening, so if you want to listen, understand that whatever may be showing up in these rays, let me pull this down a little bit. All right. So some of the Gemini imbalancing diseases, diseases of the lungs, including bronchial complaints, nervous system disorders, chronic fatigue. So remember, she got talking about the iron levels, right? All of that is in this, right? Chronic yeah. fatigue asthma, carpal tunnel, stiff shoulders, pinched nerves, sensory disorders and issues, including damages to the sensory receptors, injuries or issues to the hands, fingers, arms, and shoulders, okay? I had to take my nails off, and y'all, for the last two weeks, my nails have been going through it. My fingers have been going through it. Why? Because I was completely ignored. I just had my nails, getting my nails done, do, 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 not realizing that I needed a break. I needed a doggone break, right? So now I'm feeling it. I'm dealing with the energy of it, right? And I got a crook G right now in my right side of my neck this morning. I wonder what is going on. Like if I turn to the to the right, I feel like it's coming off my head. I'm like, what is going on? Well, nothing wrong with me yesterday. Yeah, but today it is because the Gemini oh, full moon, God. the Gemini full moon is talking to you. Oh. That's what's happening. Okay. Injuries are issues with the hands, fingers, arms, and shoulders. Blocks, lack of tone, spasms with the tubes of the body, including infections such as UTIs, okay? Hearing and speech disorders. So you're being caught up on your words, okay? Or the fact that you can't hear, feel like you get an ear infection, you know what I'm saying? Learning difficulties or a need for radically different learning styles than presented by the dominant overculture. So when people start talking about uh, uh, OCD, okay, or ADHD, uh uh what is it neurodivergence right these are some of the new things that's been coming up this is all because your gemini is out of balance now i'm not saying that you don't truly have adhd or that you're not neurodivergent that's not what i'm saying i'm saying it's a reason why you got it and the reason why you got it is because your gemini faces are out of balance you you are you got weak spots and if you want to get out of having adhd or get out of being neurodivergent this is one of the ways that you can do it by studying yourself and getting stronger in these Gemini aspects, using the full moon and using this opportunity to say, you know what? Let me get a little bit stronger on these things, okay? 
Um, where was I? Okay, disorders of the blood capillaries, including Raynard's disease, blood diseases in general, okay? Especially if you got strong Pisces placements, okay? Social anxiety, depression, lack of inspiration, high blood pressure, out of balanced nervous system, either overactive or under underachieved, or moving back and forth between both states, a sign of a tense tissue state. So that back and forth energy, I'm gonna go over here, no I'm not. I'm gonna eat this. No, I ain't. I'm hungry. No, I'm not. I need to go get some water. I ain't thirsty. That's that's out of balance. That's out of balance. It's Gemini energy. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go back to uh, neurological conditions such as epilepsy, diseases of the eyes, poor and, and poor or damaged eyesight. So if your eyes are strained right now, okay, and even though the eyes is tend to be something that the Aries energy deals with, again, we're dealing with the wounded healer. So because we're dealing with the wounded healer, if you got some eyesight stuff going on, now you know the Gemini energy is coming to help you. I'm not calling this out to try to say, oh, you got these issues and you know it's not a real issue. I'm giving you a reason on how to heal yourself. These doctors will not help you. They cannot help you. The reason why they can't help you is because they are not in here. You're in here. Your, your spirit is in here. So if you want to know how to get in there, and work on that, this is giving you all the information that you need. You got it all inside of you. The problem is that you're not listening to yourself, okay? That's the issue. Lingering illnesses, hyperactivity, over-reliance on social life or self-worth. That's got, people got to affirm you. You ain't, you not good for you. If ain't nobody telling you you're doing great, then you don't think you're doing great. You got to get other people to pat you on the back. No, you need to pat you on the back, okay? Dishonesty lying, manipulation through spoken or written words. So them emails, you know that you were supposed to show up some, show up for something and you don't. And then you tell people, oh, I didn't show up because my alarm clock didn't, didn't go off. That's a lie. You didn't show up because you was too all over the place and you didn't have no direction. So lying is going to cause you to have some body issues. So we got to stop thinking that lying ain't doing something to us. It is. It's doing something to you because your body know you're not telling the truth. Even though the world may believe you, your body don't. Your energy knows that you're, you're not being honest. And when it's not, it's going to give you a, a signal or, or how we can say it's going to give you some type of vibration. It's going to give you some type of symptom so you'll know what you need to go and heal and deal with, okay? Oversized ego and selfishness. Blowing your head up. But knowing that you ain't really getting nothing done. Oh, I do this and I do that. When the last time you didn't even do that shit? Stop telling yourself that lie. You, you want to do it, but it ain't the truth, okay? That's what I'm talking about, overinflated ego, selfishness. Social media addiction. Every time you wake up, you can't even sit with yourself and tell yourself, oh, I'm having a great day. Today is going to be good. I'm going to do what I need to do for me. But before you even give yourself any type of, of vision for your day, you grabbing the phone. You scrolling on social media. That energy alone is what I mean about having an overinflated ego and having a social media addiction. It's not real. Because if you grabbing your phone before you give yourself any type of direction for your day, then you, you already lost. Because now you're going to be on there scrolling for some type of validation, something to make you feel good when you the person need to make you feel good. That's what I mean about having social media addiction. And a lot of us have it. Why? Because we don't want to give ourselves the time. You don't want to create, but you want to go spend all day watching somebody else's creativity. You watching people constantly create and do things. And what you doing? You like it? You putting hearts on it? That's all you're going to do with your day? What about you creating something? You don't have to spend your time being addicted to social media. Have a time frame on it. Put a time limit on, especially for the rest of the year. For the rest of the year, put a time frame on what you're going to do, okay? I'm going to be on social media for two hours. I'm going to get on there and do, and especially if you ain't got no business or something that you're promoting, you need to get off there right now anyway. What you on there for? I don't understand. You need to be on there promoting yourself, doing something for yourself. Otherwise, get off until you are ready to get on there and promote something. Because if you don't have nothing to promote, then what you're gonna wind up doing again is giving the end to the addiction of it, spending hours and hours. And if you, if you think I'm telling, what you can do is go in your phone. This is something that I'm glad that the phones have started to do now. There is a part on your phone that it would tell you how many hours you're spending on social media. And most of us are spending days worth of jobs on social media. You on that eight hours. 
nine hours, 10. And ain't made no money, ain't did nothing for yourself, but you on social media eight, nine hours? Turn that mug off. Go do something for yourself. Because when you don't, then you're creating weak spots. You're creating symptoms in your body that's letting you know that you are not doing what needs to be done, okay? Lack of focus and mindfulness. Lack of, of perception on the truth of the situation. These are all imbalances and diseases that the Gemini full moon is trying to get you to understand. So whatever's showing up for you, whether it be hands, shoulders, arm, with lungs, whatever, if you're having some type of bronchitis right now, cold, flu, influenza, all of that is Gemini trying to get you to understand that you are out of balance. Okay? Y'all got it? All right. So I'm going to get off a of screen share and we're going to have a little bit of conversation and I'm going to let y'all go. Okay. All right. Stop share. All right. So I want to finish off this call with some celebration, right? I want us to sell and learn how to celebrate ourselves. So if you don't know how to celebrate yourself, you can do it right now. Okay. I want you, you can either type it in the chat if you want to type it in the chat. Or you can either come off mute and, and say it off of mute. But I want you to name or list at least one thing in this 2022 year that you are grateful for. Okay. What have you done? What have you accomplished that you are extremely proud of yourself for? Whoever want to go first. Okay. 